Welcome back. Last section of Manual S, we're going to talk about selecting humidifiers and ancillary dehumidification. Okay, so walking forward here, when we select humidifiers, a lot of times uh, the excess for your minimum capacity is based on the small size available. Humidifiers can actually add a lot when you talk about central humidification to your ducted system. Can add a lot of humidity to the space. Okay. Um, what you need is actually based on the leakage of the house, number of people in the home, and the size of the home, okay? So as an example here, this is April Air's chart and what they recommend. It's a humidifier sizing chart based on square footage and the tightness of the house. So in this example here, let's say um, we needed, uh, we have a 2,500 square foot home and it's average, okay? So average regarding uh, the tightness of the home. That's what we set it for in our load calculation. So you can see in that example, we have 21.3 gallons per day needed. Keep in mind, that's the total needs. A family of four will add two gallons of humidity per day, just in normal activity with cooking, bathing, washing, breathing in the house, okay? So we would minus that two gallons out from the 21.3, and we would need about 19 gallons a day. I would not recommend we go to the next size up for humidifier specs and put in the 26 gallon humidifier, whatever it ends up being. This particular powered humidifier here gives me 18 gallons per day in their chart. That would apply, okay? So very simple, your minimum capacity, obviously you need to meet that or within reason, all right? Uh, I'm willing to bet unless you measured the leakage of the house, it's an educated guess and it's on the conservative side, you probably don't need as much humidity as you think you do. Um, but make sure you're adding, especially in a dry, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, a cold climate like here in New England. Most houses need humidity, especially with a forced air furnace. All right. So if you start getting moisture on the inside of your windows, if the dew point of the air of that window that, that device is below the dew point of the air, right? It happens a lot in the winter time and you have moisture collecting on the inside of that, you need to turn down your humidifier in the house, okay? Start adding a little less humidity to the space, okay? Typically we're talking 30, 35% is normal here in the Northeast in the winter time. All right, let's talk about dehumidifiers. This is actually uh, some simple math that a lot of people don't realize. When you talk about a whole house dehumidifier, this is ancillary dehumidification. It works in combination with your air conditioner, okay? You should always meet 85% of the total latent cooling load from your load calculation. Now, unfortunately, that's in BTUs. We need to convert BTUs over to pints per day or liters per day, because that's how we rate humidifiers, okay? Here in the United States, most of the American manufacturers rate it in pints per day. So to get there, there's a little bit of math. So I'm gonna take that fictional load calc I had earlier, and now you know I need 6,647 BTUs. Now to get pints per hour, we divide that number, oh, I apologize, we need to get 85% of that, that's our target, right? So 5,650. We then divide that by 1,054, the constant to get to pints per hour from BTUs per hour. In this case, we need 5.4 pints per hour. Now. Obviously, we multiply that by 24 hours in a day to get two pints per day. So we times 24. In this example, we need 130 pints per day. If we were going to liters per day, we would divide that by the constant of 2.113 to get to liters per day. Okay. So 130 pints per day here in the United States for this house. You can see if we actually put ancillary dehumidification in, we are allowed anywhere in the United States to use condition B for heat pump selection. Okay. So if we are uh, in a warm climate, but we need to oversize the system in order to get the BTUs needed for some reason, um, it could be plus 15,000 BTUs off of the total cooling gain if we are able to address the latent needs in air conditioning with dehumid a whole house dehumidifier, okay? So that way we don't have to worry about ramping down in the summertime and getting 100% of that uh, latent right? So an oversized system in that application isn't going to be a problem because we're removing the moisture with the dehumidifier, okay? So in this example here, um, you can see I need 130 pints per day. I would take a look at the chart. I'm not going to use the one that gives me 95 pints per day. I have an option of the bottom two for this April air in this example. It could be any manufacturer. They all rate them in pints per day or liters per day. You can see uh, 130 pints per day um, I would be using those bottom two models or three models that are available. All right, any questions on humidifiers or dehumidifiers, feel free to reach out anytime. 
especially on the Facebook page. Um, we have quite a few followers at this point, and uh, we can definitely get that conversation rolling. I know uh, providing you that math for dehumidification might be something new to you. Don't be surprised if you pull a permit for a whole house dehumidifier and somebody actually holds you to that in the design process for your building department. So um, look forward to hearing from you. And uh, if you're rolling forward in the system design process, I'm going to close out Manual S and we're going to move right on to residential duct design in Manual D. See you on the next one.